I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and let's dye some self-striping yarn. Right here I have a six meter skein of Wool to Dye Force Platinum Sock. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the skein is, well, six meters long. It's super long and it's a really good size for a two color self-striping yarn, but I'd like to do a three color self-striping yarn with this. And then we'll do a swatch at the end and see approximately how long those stripes are. That's right, there will be a swatch. <laughs> I always try to include a swatch whenever I do something self-striping because I think that more than any other type of project, having a swatch can help you understand, okay, this is how long those color repeats are. And the difference in the width or whether you're going back and forth and in the round, that doesn't make as much of a difference as it does with other types of yarn where the pooling and things you can see can vary so much depending on your, uh, your gauge and the number of stitches that you have. And so therefore, when you are designing a self-striping yarn, and if you're gonna make your own really long skein yourself, it then is more important to think about how long you want the skein to be based on how long you want your stripes to be. So one thing I can recommend before getting started, if you are a sock knitter, knit a row of a sock that is the size and the gauge that you knit for yourself, and then unravel exactly one row and measure how long how much yarn you used to knit that one round. Because then you can take the length of yarn that you have per row and use that to calculate how big you want each of your stripes to be, which can be a way to then have non-equal stripes as well. But I'm not as much a sock knitter, so that's not something I have done myself, but is honestly something that I should do to demonstrate. So if you'd like me to knit socks so that way I can figure out my yardage per row, let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you don't want to buy a super long skein from wool to die for, like the one that I have right here that is folded over a few times, uh, you can use a really long nitty knotty or you can use a warping board of some kind or even two chairs spread out across a room to create your really long skein. And these are some techniques that I've talked about in other videos. I have a whole playlist of self-striping yarn that you can go check out. But anyway, I think I've mostly done two colors and occasionally six colors with the super long skein. So today, let's do three colors and see how it comes out. My plan for the self-striping colorway is to pick three colors off of one of the diagonals from the Summer Mini Skein Mini Series color mixing of Extreme Blue and True Black. I really enjoyed that diagonal as a fade set, and I thought that picking either corner and then the color in the middle would create a beautiful blue self-striping yarn. The number depth of shade refers to the number of grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And you could talk about this number for when you're doing mixtures of each color separately, or you could talk about the total combined color. But today I'll be referring to them separately. So the three colors that we will be using are a 0.0625% depth of shade of extreme blue for a really pretty pastel blue and no true black. Then we're gonna have a 0.25% depth of shade of extreme blue and a 0.125% depth of shade of true black a 1% depth of shade of extreme blue and a half percent depth of shade of true black to give us these three colors. And I know that these three colors will look distinct enough from one another because we've done that color mixing exercise. And so therefore, I know that they will look more like stripes that go in a repeat versus a gradient. On this sheet, I've gone ahead and calculated the total number of grams that I would need to achieve these depths of shade on 33 grams of yarn. Because since we are dyeing uh, 100 grams of yarn total on three stripes, each stripe will be, well, technically 33.3 grams. So I've already explained that the depth of shade is the grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. 
And if we multiply this by the grams of yarn that we will be using, the grams of yarn units cancel out, and we can get the grams of dye that we need to achieve that color. It is very difficult to weigh out 0.02 grams of dye that we would need for that pastel blue shade. So it makes more sense to make a stock solution and then measure out a volume from that. Now a 1% stock solution is defined as one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid. And if we're working with this 1% stock and we wanted 0.02 grams of dye, we would only need two milliliters of this stock solution. And it's much easier to measure out two milliliters than it is to measure out that dye. But it is easier to measure out larger volumes of liquid still than smaller ones. So we could dilute our stock solution or make a more dilute stock solution and say have a 0.33% stock, which would be 0.33 grams of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid. And this all depends on how, I guess, you want to mix up your stock or we can make a dilution of our stock so it's less concentrated, so then we can measure out a greater volume. To calculate the number of milliliters of dye that you need, you will take the grams of dye that you need, divided by the stock solution concentration, which would give you, and units wise, that would give you grams dye over, grams dye over 100 milliliters of liquid, so that's a way that you can uh, calculate it. But this, the second grams of dye is based on the, the stock solution concentration. And so, going from the depths of shade that I've already decided I wanted, if I was gonna start with a 0.33% stock solution, this is the volume of dye I would need to add for each of the colors. Uh, and it is, again, easier to measure out the larger volume than it is to measure out a small volume. But I can say that a 0.33% stock solution is just one third <laughs> of 1%. So if you were gonna do this with your 1% stock solutions, you would just take all of these values and divide them by three. But I wanted to mix it up uh, just to show something a little different and to show that you don't have to start with a 1% stock solution. Would it be helpful for me to do like chalk talk style of some of these calculations? I mean, I could use a whiteboard and really like write them out and show how units cancel out and go through it a bit slower. If this is something that you would find interesting or whether I pre-film a long form of me doing some calculations or I do it as a live stream, please let me know down in the comments below. Before we go and do the dilutions and measure out the dyes, I would like to give a huge thank you to the Chemnitz patrons for supporting the, my yarn dyeing journey here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. So thank you so much, Stacy Pace, Elena Karnes, Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and the rest of the Fiber patrons. You'll see some of their names on the screen right now. And if you're a huge fan of Chemnitz and want early access to some content and some behind the scenes sneak peeks, go and check out the Patreon. You can find a link to it down in the video description. Let's prepare the yarn. I pre-soaked our really long skein in some plain tap water overnight. I had originally planned on 20 to 30 minutes, but you know, it is what it is. And so I just squeezed out most of the liquid so the yarn is still damp. And now I want to take my really long skein and divide it into thirds the best that I can. I recently used one of these really long skeins to do a, two, a six color self striping yarn. And in that project, I made a swatch over 30 stitches on size one needles. And each of the colors made at least two rows in stockinette, which means that if I was doing a 60 stitch sock, each color would have been at least one full round. Ooh, no, this isn't the way that I want to do it at all. Okay, I laid it out and if I did it this way, I would have a really long stripe and then a thin stripe. This would give a four color, so it would go color one, color two, color three, color two, color one, color two, color three, color two, color one. And that's not the way I actually want it set up. Oh, funny. I forgot. Okay, so this is actually correct. 
um, I will go ahead and mark this color. So we have it divided into thirds. And then the next one, I'm going to want to take this whole long section, this end actually, of that section and bring it down to this same point, um, the same midpoint right here. And I am just going to bring this over, oh dear, as it's slipping and hopefully things will be approximately the same length. So let's go ahead and check this now. Okay, I think, I don't know if you could see, it's pretty darn close. Okay, I have no idea how well this showed up on camera, but I had it set up like that. I put a tie right there. And then with this section, okay, so this is just that, that one area and that's the tie. I took this and opened it and then took this point and brought it up there. So then at that point, we would then have two loops and then that original first one. So the whole skein, rather than being a circle, is sort of attached like that. <laughs> I hope that this helps visualize. Since the skein is so long, I know it may have been hard to see. It's like, Rebecca, don't make things overly complicated. But the nice thing about having three colors like I have set up here, is that the order that I do the three colors doesn't matter. Because if I do light blue, medium, dark, even if I did light blue, medium, dark, like it's still gonna be the same order. Each color is gonna touch the other two colors at one of the intersections. So that all works out really great. But sometime I should do this the way that I had originally set it up and try to do, I guess, three color but four suction self striping someday. So that is officially on the list. To make our more dilute stock solution of extreme blue, I have 100 milliliters of water here. And then I'm gonna take a 1% stock solution of the extreme blue and measure out 50 milliliters. I love graduated cylinders. I wish I still had graduated pipettes, but. All right, and so this is officially a 0.333333% stock solution. Now for our black, I made the stock of the Extreme Blue yesterday. Our 1% stock of True Black is a tiny bit older, um, but here, because I'm gonna need less of it overall, I've started with 50 milliliters of water, and I'm gonna measure out 25 milliliters of our true black, and there we go. We have our stocks. And right here, I actually have some leftovers from making the extreme blue stock, and so I'm gonna rinse out the graduated cylinders to save up this leftover dye for something near the end. Okay, for the lightest blue color, I need six milliliters and for that I will use this graduated syringe. I need just six milliliters of our extreme blue color. For the second color I'm going to need about, uh, I think that if I use the whole decimal and not just 0.33 it does work out to being 25 milliliters so that's what I'm going to do. And then for the third color, I need, that is a 50 milliliter. For the third color, I need 100 milliliters. I did the volumes of these stocks knowing how much I needed so that way I would be able to measure out the correct uh, amount. And I did add just a qu quarter cup of water. Uh oh, this one might be a little full. I added about a quarter cup of water to each of them to start with, just so that way there's some volume, but I will rinse them out before we dye the yarn. Um, and I'm gonna go rinse these. Okay, now to our middle sample. We need 12 milliliters of our black. And then over here, we need 50. And hopefully this will fit. It fits. <laughs> may not look vastly different right now and technically these two are the same color just at a different depth of shade but um, 
<laughs> you can see how different these volumes are that'll give us these very different colors. We are gonna start with our lightest color. So in this pot, I have eight cups of warm tap water with no acid. I'm gonna add our blue and I'm gonna rinse this cup out. Just make sure we have all of our pigment in there. Okay, and now with no acid in here still, I'm going to add this first color as gracefully as I can while keeping the other two colors out. Um, and I wanted to start, there'll be tonal nature to this, but I wanted to start with the palest color. Uh, for one thing, it'll be the fastest to clear, but also uh, it'll then be easier to correct uh, with the other ones. And so uh, if I end up with uh, a little too much of this light blue, on, on one of the other sections, that'll be okay. Uh, but I do have a spoon on the other yarn to try to keep it out of the pot and we have everything nice and spread out. Okay, the heat is still on low. I'm gonna go ahead and add one, ta uh, we'll add two tablespoons of white vinegar. Give this another little stir but you can see just how pigmented this color is. And I will turn up the heat a bit, and I'm gonna let this go for, I would say, about 20 minutes, and we'll come and check and see if the water has cleared then. But I did wanna zoom out for a moment so you could see how, and actually, I think like 30 seconds in and a lot of the color has absorbed, but I do wanna heat this for the full 20 minutes. Uh, but you can see the, the, the rest of the yarn sort of hanging out of the pot. And here is just one other angle of how things look in the pot. It has been 20 minutes. I'm gonna turn off the heat here and I am gonna remove this from the pot. I do feel like we will probably want to move our zip ties a little bit before doing the second color. But what I do want to do is let this cool off a little bit before we set up for the next rounds of dyeing. However, what I will do right now is just add the second color to the pot along with a bit of water. So that way that's ready to go, even with the pot off. Um, this time there's acid in there already, so things may start striking a little bit faster, but uh, we're gonna let the yarn cool and then we'll be back. Okay, since I don't want to leave a white resist mark behind, I feel a need to move uh, some of these zip ties. Okay, we are going to adjust things accordingly. Um, so, for example, I am going to move one of these zip ties to be entirely on this blue section uh, so that way we can keep that out <laughs> and then, okay, so then this is where and up until about there. There we go. This is where I'll do the next color. Okay, so having this such that this one comes back this way, but we can have this whole section go in and we want it to go at least up to where that blue starts. Uh, I know that that was pretty <laughs> confusing, but what I didn't want, I wanted the color that I'm putting in to be straight going in versus this one is like coming out of the center and folded back, which would give a more resist there. But now let's go start dyeing this section. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put this in for this deeper blue. up to that zip tie and stir around. And I'm hoping, well we haven't absorbed all the color yet, but I'm now a little nervous 
that it's not going to quite be enough. We may still have like a little bit of a resist point on here, but I'm hoping no. I'm hoping no. And I'm going to put that there. So the, the dye bath right now is still warm. Uh, okay, that's going to get darker, I hope. <laughs> Rebecca, trust the process. Trust the process. Okay. I am going to turn on the heat now and we will check back in in 20 minutes. And I've just realized that I think that I was focused up on that top section the entire time, uh, but I hope uh, that this will turn out. And there's still like blue and black left in there. So I hope, I hope this works out the way that I want it to. All right, I'll be back in 20 minutes. All right, it has been 20 minutes, and let's see. I'd say the majority of the color has absorbed. Um, I am going to remove this, and I'll turn off the heat on the stove again, and set this aside to cool, so we can rearrange things for the third color. But actually, even now, with the third color being white, this still works really nicely and this is a significantly different shade as first one which is what I wanted but I will go ahead so I've been nervous about this one spilling this whole time and add our deepest color in and rinse it out for good measure one more little cup of water uh, and so the the pot the heat is off um, while we're waiting for things to cool, setting it up for the third color should be pretty easy. So I will be back once things have cooled off enough so I can touch it. All right, this time, since we've got everything dyed, we can easily move these zip ties with no problem because now we have a section that's just white and that should be relatively easy for us to find, and then also find, okay, where we may want that color to stop. So since the next color is darker, I'd like to cover this little spot-esque and get a little bit of that white in there. So I'm gonna come in and cover up about here. And that will be our mark to try to, and I can pull that down a little bit, um, our mark to try to keep that part out and this part in. Last time I did three color, did I do it in mason jars? I think I love using mason jars, but I will say that uh, this is a little bit, uh, well, actually, the mason jars are a little easier, but there is something nice and fun about doing it this way. Okay, and so I've got the zip tie just above the surface of the liquid. And right now, it's like, ooh, this isn't gonna be dark enough, but let's not forget that I think that we've got four times as much dye in here as we did for uh, the la just the last round. So I'm gonna turn on the heat again, but I am also going to add two, three more tablespoons of white vinegar, just because we know there is so much more dye, and there's so much space for the yarn to move that even if we end up with something tonal, uh, this will just help all of the color strike. So I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll be back. It has been about 20 minutes and we are very steamy and there is still, I would say, almost as much blue left in here as what gave us that pastel shade. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the heat on low for another 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave this to cool for 
a reasonable length of time here in the dye pot. And reasonable length of time might be a few hours or until things look clear. Okay, we have cooled off. Let's take off this final zip tie. That looks great. That join looks fantastic. Um, I am really happy. Oh, hopefully this isn't tangled. I am really, really happy with these colors. This turned out so good. Oh, that's great. Now, technique wise, this worked really, really well. And we actually don't have a ton of water here in the pot, but we were able to have a greater volume of liquid here than we would have had if we were using three mason jars. So there's a big chance that our color is more even overall on each stripe section. But I do, I think I prefer setting up three different jars and having all the colors going at one time just because it's a little easier to maybe adjust the colors as needed and then it the setup and the heat setting goes a bit faster but if you don't have mason jars like this worked well all right so i am going to place this zip tight loosely around one of those sections and I, oh, there we go. The tangle wasn't bad. The tangle wasn't bad, but we've got our beautiful three color self-striping yarn here. And actually we're ready to go wash it. All right, let's wash very, very carefully. Very, very carefully. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is fold this in half twice. There we go, to wash it. Um, and holding on to, I guess, a side so it uh, doesn't get tangled. And I'm gonna add some just clear dish soap to the rinse, but our dye dock was clear at the end. And I am not seeing any bleeding, which is fantastic. And oh my gosh, this is so fun. So, so fun. So I am gonna go ahead and rinse out all of the soap. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer, uh, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back and look at it uh, before I stain it and knit our swatch. Oh, but also we have some leftover dye, so let's go take care of that. I went back to the same dye pot, added eight cups of water. There's plenty of acid in here, so the larger volume shouldn't be a problem. And then I added in 200 grams of Nitpick Swish DK. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino and sort of arranged it in the pot. I started off with the combined dye that I had used to rinse out all the syringes and graduated cylinders and poured that over the middle of the two skeins. Then I diluted the rest of that 0.33% uh, stock solution I had of the extreme blue and poured it down the end near where I had the zip ties. I did something very similar with the black. I diluted it and then poured it down at the other end. And then I, the, the pot was still cold. I turned on the heat and slowly started to heat things up. And part of me, really wanted to take my spoon and go and press down and move things. The pot is a little crowded, but there's also space, and I know pouring in liquid would help the colors spread. But as much as I wanted to move it, I also want to see what will happen and how much white we have left behind. Because if I'm not happy with the final color, we can always over dye it. So I set a timer for 20 minutes. And then we'll be back and see what's going on. I'm now going to lift up and see how we're doing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. So some of the color is a little splotchy, but we've got some white and gray and blue. That's really pretty. That's really, really pretty. All right. Um, I am going to go ahead and leave it in the pot for 15 minutes. Then I'll turn off the heat, uh, let things cool completely, and then probably wash it off camera. Uh, but we'll take a look at the finished dry yarn at the end of this video. 
Here are the finished self-striping colors. I remember I was nervous when I added the dye to the pot for the second stripe and was worried that it wasn't going to be sufficiently different. Even though I was pulling these color recipes from my color mixing video, therefore I knew they were going to be distinct, but I was still nervous. However, I am really happy how this shades of blue progression has worked out. And what I have to do now is go ahead and re-skein this because this is a six meter skein and I can't knit directly from it without creating a tangled mess. So I am going to re-skein this manually onto a Knitty Naughty. This is one I made out of PVC pipe and I will have this skein between two chairs in my front hall and I'll listen to a podcast and walk back and forth between them as I am winding it. It probably would be a little bit faster for me to set up my warping board and try to have it on there, but this works for me. Once the yarn is reskeined, then I'm going to knit a swatch. So I will be back once I have finished reskeining the yarn and knitting a swatch. Here is the reskeined yarn and our swatch. This is a 30 stitch stockinette swatch knit on 2.5 millimeter or US size one knitting needles. And I picked 30 stitches because I think 60 stitches is a circumference used in a lot of socks. So for each of the stripe widths, uh, we would divide it by two. So on this swatch, I see five to six rows of each color. So I think that this uh, dyeing this six meter skein with three colors would, on a pair of socks, give us stripes that are two to three rows wide. Obviously, the size of the stripes will vary based on your stitches and the pattern that you're knitting, but I do like to show swatches in these self-striping videos, so that way if you have stripes that you want to create, you know how long of a skein you need. I think the best way to plan out your stripes if you're going to dye your own self-striping sock yarn is to knit a round of a sock, unravel it, and measure how long the yarn was to make one round. And then that's the length that you would know you would need for each stripe. And that could help you plan exactly how long you need to make the various repeats for your project. With some of our extreme blue and black leftovers, I added the yarn to the pot and poured the dye on. And we have this very soft, variegated colorway. And the colors are, the two colorways aren't identical, but the colorway is somewhat repeating in that there will be progressions of blue, white, and black in a way that might pool. But it's also soft because the colors are very blended and dispersed. We don't have sharp color transitions. I have been really into dyeing more softer, random, variegated colorways like this lately, and I'm excited to do more, not just as a leave no dye behind, but more with more intent and purpose. Uh, even though, like, I love this color combination and I will combine them, I know I'll combine them again in the future. As soon as I finish signing off, I am going to unravel the swatch back into this skein. But I hope that this video was helpful for creating a three color self-striping yarn using a commercially wound six meter skein. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and don't forget to make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and give the video a thumbs up while you are at it. Also, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon for early access to the Dipop PS series, plus some more behind the scenes, sneak peeks, and more. You can find a link to it down in the video description. Patrons, thank you so much for selecting self-striping yarn, and I'm so excited to see what you voted for for me to die up next month. Thank you so much for watching.